Hello everyone, in this video I'll be ranking all of the best throwables and grenades in Baldur's Gate 3. So there's some pretty cool ones, ranging from Volo's Mustache Wax to one that literally will release a spectator on the uh, pent enemies. So I'll show you what that one looks like here first, just to kick things off. But uh, these are really cool because they have a variety of effects that go all over the place and even releasing a spectator there. So that is pretty fancy, but I'll get into some of the other grenades here. So First things first, we got ourselves the Acid Vial. Now this is just a basic one, it deals 2d6 acid damage and it creates an acid surface which will reduce armor class by 2. Acid Vials are pretty nice, especially if you have a target that's hard to hit. And uh, Acid Damage is not the most resisted damage type, so it's a pretty good damage. I would say that the Acid Vial is probably somewhere around A tier, just because you can reduce armor classes, allowing you to land your hits a little bit more frequently, which is nice if you have like a great weapon master. I'm going to put it in the A tier. It's a pretty solid one. And next, we got ourselves the Caustic Bulbs, which is kind of similar, uh, but a little different. This only does 1d4 of acid damage per turn. These are much more frequently found in the game. Um, there's no saving throw on the acid damage, which is pretty nice. And it can be turned into fire, too, if you light it on fire. The only thing is, it doesn't have the same armor class reducing effects of the acid vial. So... I'd have to say this one's probably of C-tier choice. So, yeah, well, it is a decent one to go with. It's not the best. But next we got ourselves, I guess this is the uh, the Iron Flask, which I just threw. It releases a Spectator. Now, it's arguable if this is a good effect or not, because you have to fight the Spectator, and that's a tough enemy. It's got 176 health there. So it is quite a menacing beast to fight against, but a nice thing about this is you can get um, the enemies hurt by this. So there is some usefulness. I think since it's such a unique item, I will put it up pretty high. So I'll have to say this is probably, I wouldn't say it's S tier, it's not game breakingly good. Um, I'd probably say like, we'll put it in the middle B tier just because you have to fight the spectator too. And you got a bunch of other options that you can use to throw at it, like the smoke powder bomb and I also guess show what the the acid vial looks like. I guess we won't do that, but yeah, the iron flask is really powerful. Next, we got ourselves the alchemist fire. This inflicts burning for two turns and creates a fire surface. It's not too bad. Being able to create fire surfaces is really nice, and um, additional damage is always useful. Uh, it's, you're immune to it if the target is wet, so you know I'm a big fan of those types of builds. So I don't use this one very often, but you can use this to dip your weapons in. So. There's some usefulness there. I just don't think it's as good as some of the others, so I will put it in the C tier because we got some really great grenades coming up next. And we have ourselves the Haste Spore Flask. This is cool. You get them from, uh, you can get them early in the game in Act 1 by Sovereign Spa. He can give those to you if you go down to the Underdark. What do Haste Spores do? Well, glad you asked. They give you Haste, which, as you know, is extremely powerful. It gives you another action, it gives you a plus two to your armor class, it doubles your speed. This only lasts for one turn, though. So this one is, it's good, but I feel like there is better options out there. Um, I mean, haste is amazing. There's also some other grenades that will give haste, too. But I can't deny, haste is really nice. The fact that you can't get too, too many of them kind of sucks. But uh, you can also can't craft these where there's another kind that's craftable. I'll put it in the A tier, though, because early in the game, being able to get haste is super useful. And uh, this is a very effective item to get. Now, if you play as a spore keeper or a druid of the circle of the spores you're able to create haste spores if you have the uh circle of the spore keeper armor so similar effect but uh next we get a grease bottle now this is there's a similar one volo's mustache wax but the grease bottle just creates grease these are very common in the game you can't craft them but grease is a nice surface it's going to create difficult terrain and it can knock people prone so that's pretty good i'll probably put it right around the b tier you can also light it on fire or maybe like upwards of a tier this is a good one because Grease is a spell that you can get as a, as a wizard, but being able to throw it as a bonus action, all that much better. Now we got ourselves one of the one of my favorites. This is a very useful one. This is the Sanguine Explosive. So you get these from you get these from uh, I'm trying to find it here. You get this from Araj Obladra. I struggled with that name, but what do you do is if you give her your blood to donate in Act 3, she'll let you buy these. What's great about them is they explode and they deal 4d8 of force damage plus 4d8 of fire damage. So that's pretty good. These do take an action to use, but hey, for a grenade that does that much damage, this is a solid choice. I would have to say this is S tier. 48 force damage plus 48 fire damage is incredible. So being able to inflict that is nice. 
Uh, it has a DC save of 17 dexterity, so pretty high DC uh, dexterity saving throw there uh, to resist the burning, but you still get hit with the force. But uh, yeah, you get two. So if you donate your blood, she'll sell two of these per long rest. So um, yeah, it's not stated that she sells them, but you do get to buy them. Next, we got ourselves Holy Water. Now, this is an interesting one because it only deals effects to the fiends and undead. Now, what this does is it deals a 3d6 of radiant damage, and the dexterity saving throw will have it, um, and it creates a water surface. Now, I love water surfaces, and I love beating up undead, so this is perfect. It's only a dexterity saving throw 13, but undead typically have a lower dexterity score, so they're more than likely going to get hurt by this. And it creates a water surface, which is very effective. So I'd have to say it's probably like high B tier to A tier. It's better to water bottle technically, so I will put it up in the A tier. And I'm a big fan of just throwing water bottles around. But uh, yeah, that is a solid one. And next we got ourselves the Scrap and Shrapnel uh, Grenade. So this deals one piercing and inflicts bleeding for one turn. That's okay. Like bleeding will give you two slashing damage. Um... Like, it, it's okay at best, really. I wouldn't say this is a very useful one, but you can craft it. So, I'm going to say this is a D tier one. Only one piercing damage sucks. Uh, it should be higher damage. Like, it should be like a 1D8 or 1D4, maybe. I don't know, something like that. Bleeding for one turn is not good. It's it's only going to do three damage. So, obviously, D tier. And next, we got ourselves the web grenade. So, this will create a web surface. And webs are pretty nice, useful. You can also craft these. So, that's pretty, pretty effective. Web services uh, create difficult uh, terrain. Movement speed is halved and prevents falling damage. So you could use this, throw it down, and jump onto it. So, I mean, if you don't got someone with the web spell, the web grenades will work in their place. So I'll put it in the B tier because it's not a bad choice overall. Uh, just not the best one on this list. So, yeah. And next, we got ourselves Volo's Jar of Mustache Wax. Now, hmm, hmm. I don't really have a mustache at the moment, but uh, this is literally just grease. There's no real difference between this. One thing I'm disappointed about with this is that it doesn't actually do anything if you bring it to Volo. So you can find it in the guild hall in the lower city sewers. And it's cool to find it, but I wish there was some dialogue. Maybe in patch 7 we'll see some dialogue here because this is one of the most mysterious items. Why does Volo have mustache wax that he hides down there? I don't know. It's grease though, so I can't really put any... I'll put it right same tier as the other grease. Uh, there's only one of them and you... You can only get it once compared to grease bottles being everywhere. But uh, next we got the smoke powder bomb. Now this is a solid one. It does 3d8 plus 9 force damage. I got it here in my inventory. So I'll just pull out my throwables. Smoke powder bomb. So yeah, it does 3d8. Or 3d4 plus 9 force damage. It's a pretty good one. Um, I guess we'll... I'll put it in Mint's inventory and we'll get Mint's to throw it. Just to show the effects of it. Only a 50% chance of hitting, but... Boom! Big explosion. We unfortunately hurt the Duke. The Duke's not happy. So, <laughs> uh, this is a good one, though. Being able to do 3, 4, plus 9 force damage is nice. The smoke powder bomb you get from various vendors. It's, there's a lot of places where you can buy these, and you can get them early on in the game. So, I'd say these are probably like an A-tier choice. Being able to do 3, 4, plus 9 force damage is really nice. Uh, so, yeah, being able to do de force damage is awesome. A-tier. Next, we got ourselves the flash binder blinder so this is interesting and flex blinded which as you know is a really good option or a really good status because it gives disadvantage on attack rolls and uh, if you hit a scrying eye or a steel watcher it gets a 1d6 penalty to attack rolls and it also gets stunned so these are actually really good uh you can craft them as well so these are extremely effective against the steel watch if you struggle with the steel watch bring some of these because you can you can craft them you can buy them and uh, very effective against the Steel Watcher Titan because it's going to stun it for two turns or just one in honor mode. That's really effective. So I'd have to say this is S tier. This is just a really useful one. It's the very rare rarity. So yeah, you know it's good when it's purple. <laughs> uh, but very effective. And next we got two interesting ones. These are both from um, the Hag. So I guess I'll move them beside each other. So Flammable Slime Bomb deals 1d4 plus 2 fire damage and creates fire and burning. Um... It's pretty good. I'd say it's better than Alchemist Fire, but you can only get them from the Hag. So, and then this one creates poison surface and creates a poison cloud, which inflicts poison, giving disadvantage on attack rolls. They're both probably B tier choices. Um, they're they're decent, but not the best ones in the game. So I'd have to say yeah, B tier for both of these because 
I mean, you only get them really from the hag. You can pickpocket them and you can kind of cheese and get multiple of them, but there's not as many as some of the others in this game. So that's why I'm not going to be putting it too, too high. But uh, next we got the phase opt or this no this is reflector guard so you get these from gortosh uh you can pickpocket two of them from him or you can loot them from him basically what it does it gives you a reflector guard active which any projectiles going through the air get redirected back to their point of origin that's actually really good so there's only one way to get the reflector guard active uh so yeah if you know you're getting into a fight with lots of reflect or lots of projectiles lots of arrows throw one of these bad boys up I'd have to say these are probably A tier as well, just because being able to re redirect throw, uh, redirect any type of um, projectile is quite nice for lowering all overall damage, but not good because you don't get a very large amount of them. But next, we got the Heart Light Bomb, which uh, bays an area of in light. So this is an interesting one. It looks kind of similar to the Fire Bomb, but it's blue. And it's got a little dragon on the bottle if you zoom in super close to it. You can craft these, but it basically is dancing lights. So I'm going to say this is another D tier one. There's a lot better out there. It doesn't really do anything extra special other than, a, than what we already got with a spell. And next we got an oil flask. So this creates an oil surface, which is nice. Um, no effects while stepping on them, unfortunately, unlike grease. But it will unlight and turn into a fire from fireball or something like that. You can get this from oil barrels or oil flasks. Not that great. Despite having a cool, unique looking um, appearance there, this thing is not that good, I'll be honest. So I'd have to say it's probably a D tier choice because you're better off just using grease or plant growth. Plant growth will light on fire. So yeah, not the absolute best choice that we got in this game. So can't put it too, too high. Next, we got the phase optimizer. So this gives um, phase optimizer gives additional actions to steel watch. So obviously not something that you want to have happen. Um, so yeah, you can get these from Gortosh and there's four of them. But yeah, I'd have to say probably D tier because it's not really a benefit. It's more so for him to throw. But I still had to include it on this list because it is a grenade or throwable that you can get in the game. Um, I don't think I have them in my inventory. I've reflected. Oh, I do got reflate. Grants nearby steel watchers additional action with rolling arcana. So yeah, it kind of stinks. Not that good. So I will have to say that it's a D, it's a D tier, not the best. <laughs> uh, but next we got a spiked bulb. So this this does one piercing damage and inflicts bleeding for one turn. This is similar to the shrapnel grenade. So it's also going to the D tier. Just kind of stinks. Uh, but you you also can't craft these. You can only get them from Omelum. And they're found on the Nautiloid. So you can get them early in the game, but they're not good. But next is something that is really good. So Void Bulb steals one force damage. If that's all it did, it would suck. But it pulls creatures together. What's nice about this is you can pull creatures together and drop a big fat fireball on them. So Omaloom also sells them, and they're also on the Nautiloid. So those are the two areas you can get them. I think Void Bulbs are definitely S tier. This is one that's super effective against a lot of enemies. Because you can just pull them all together. And it's kind of like the black hole uh, elithid ability, but you don't get that till later on. So being able to get it early on in the game can make some honor mode runs a lot easier because you're able to group enemies together for a cleave, a fireball, you name it. It's a good one. So yeah, I'd have to say that's a very solid one. And next we got, we got three of them. This is a bamboozler, <laughs> the fungal bamboozler. So this creates tin mask spores, which basically it inflicts befuddled on the targets. So uh, can't control its actions. If you hit someone with this, they just wander around. It's basically confusion. Pretty similar to confusion, I guess I should say. Also, the armor of the Spore Keeper gets all three of these. So, if you want these grenades to be able to cast any time you want per long rest, get the armor of the Spore Keeper. Spore Druids stay winning. They're an awesome class. Um, this one's okay. I'd probably say, like, C tier. No, this is probably, like, a B tier choice, I'd have to say. We'll put it right around there. Haste spore grenades. So you can you can actually uh, create all of these from crafting. Haste spores, as I said, are amazing. Now, what's great about this one is it actually lasts for three turns instead of one turn where the other one... Well, you get the other one early on in the game. Being able to create these and also per, you can also purchase them from Spa. I'd have to say this one is S tier. Three turns of haste is a game changer. And I don't know if a lot of people use these often, but they are pretty solid. I like the armor of the Spore Keeper because, again, it also has that ability. You, you basically create an area where uh, you get haste, so you can have your whole team run inside it. You can haste four people and then also haste your summons. It's crazy powerful. 
And then finally we got the Noxious Spore, which basically just does 1d4 poison damage and uh, they have to do a constitution saving throw or take 2d4 poison. Yeah, that's just okay. So I'd have to say this final one is probably C tier, but yeah, that is the grenade throwables. There's also things like water bottles, which I would say are similar to holy water, probably B tier. Water is amazing. So like there's water bottles, even just like you can see here, like I can move these around um and then break that open create water and then you can do your lightning bolt on it so yeah the iron flask being probably my favorite throwable this is a really sweet one but yeah let me know your thoughts on these grenades in the comments below hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and also let me know what kind of tier list you would like to see next in baldur's gate 3 thank you so much for watching everyone i'll see you all in the next video